guys, Tammy Trier, Mountain Woman Journals. I had some requests recently. Um, I had mentioned about drying teas and various things. And my husband and I are out here in the wilderness today. And we came across, we walked through it first because we were on a mission and you could smell it. There's uh, peppermint tea that we walk through. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity, plus I can uh, forage it. So um, we're going to come down here close on this tea. Um, tea, you can tell, you can typically tell that you've got tea by the flowers that appear. Um, they actually, the flowers are by your, your, um, leaves. So, uh, it's, it's a pretty plant. Um, but beyond being pretty, it smells fantastic. Um, you can, you can smell it just like that. And looking at it, you know it's a tea. Um, but when you break a leaf off, oh, and you smell it. This is really good peppermint tea. Now, we are spoiled. In Pennsylvania, we had a really good strain of spearmint tea, which was something that we grew up with, so we are really anxious to get some of that out here. Um, but we will settle for the peppermint today. Peppermint is great for your stomach, and it combines nicely with a lot of other um, plants um, to make really good uh, varieties of tea. I love mixing it with lavender and chamomile. So I'm going to gather some of this today, and then when we get back to the house, I'm going to continue my video and show you how I like to dry it and um, and then uh, go from there and show you some of the uh, varieties I've already dried. So um, we will jump off here um, and I'll connect with you in a little bit. Hey guys, another afterthought. Um, if you're out in the wilderness or out in the woods um, at your place and you do find teas and you want to um, be able to take some home and actually plant it, very easy to do. Um, you just pull the stalks out and make sure you have some roots. You can put it in water and the roots will uh, kind of um, multiply, get a little stronger before you put them in the ground. But you can easily transplant teas um, and, and put them in your garden or in a special flower bed where you, where you grow teas. So um, don't miss out on doing that too because it's great because then you have it growing right close to the house. So just thought I'd mention that. So we'll catch you in a little bit. Okay guys, we are back in my kitchen and here is the peppermint tea that we foraged and I just want to show you, I gathered some that have the roots. The reason for that is because I do want to transplant some of these and the best way to do that is to pull them and then allow the roots to really get established and what you want to do is just take, take a piece that has the roots on it and place it in a canning jar and just allow it to sit there for um, a week or so, maybe two and allow it to um, really establish some stronger roots so that it has a chance to um, really take hold in your garden or flower bed. So I'm sticking a couple of those in there. And um, the other thing you can do is keep these, sorry, um, keep these um, growing on your windowsill or in your home during the winter too um, and utilize it and get fresh uh, peppermint for uh, stomach aches or in your food, um, you know, seasonings. But um, to dry this, it's so easy. All you have to do is just take it like this and bunch it together and you can hang it upside down like such um, in a uh, dust-free area. So what I actually do is I stick these into an actual paper bag down in and, and I close the bag around the stems and then just hang it from my wash line. That way your tea is actually down in the bag like such and allows it, the leaves when they dry uh, and may fall off to end up in a clean place and it keeps them dust free and makes it really nice and easy to dry them. You can also put them in the sun um, and in a sun oven and let them dry. They'll do go real fast that way, but I kind of like letting them dry naturally. And then um, you can use a uh, spice um, cleaver um, to mash them up and um, put them in a jar and seal them. You can also put that canning jar in your um, oven. I have a uh, propane or gas oven, so my pilot's on all the time. So if you put it in there with a little bit of heat, it will actually seal it and it'll last longer for you on your shelf. 
But I love being able to forage teas and all kinds of plants out in the wild. It is something you need to be very careful with um, and make sure that you do know how to identify your plant. Um, so if you aren't familiar with the varying plants, I highly suggest that you connect with someone that is and um, learn the plants and be sure that you're identifying them properly. Um, but making your own teas is something that is so amazing. Um, you know, you can mix your um, peppermint with chamomile. I love using um, my dried elderberries also. They're great um, and, in antioxidants and also uh, immune boosting. So I love mixing those with my teas in the wintertime. But I, I like to have tea throughout the year. We make uh, sun tea also using the fresh uh, tea leaves. So uh, it's a really great benefit, saves you lots of money, and there's so much around us in the wild. So definitely consider you know, uh, making your own teas. Um, raspberry will be my next thing that I'm foraging. And um, next year we will have an amazing herb garden going. This year we were just too busy to pull it off. But um, stay tuned. There's a lot of videos coming, a lot of great information, and we really appreciate you watching our videos. And if you haven't taken the time or, or are not familiar, we have a website, treyerwilderness.com. Be sure to come over, join us, um, check out our posts, and also feel free to subscribe to our newsletter. It's a weekly newsletter, and we provide you with all kinds of information on homesteading, survival, you name it. So thanks so much for joining us, and until the next video, you guys take care, and God bless.